I just want to make sure everybody can uh, uh, can hear me out there, Pam. I see your uh, your your resume up. I don't see my picture on the screen, but I'm going to go ahead and start. I want to thank everybody for being here. I hope you can see me. Um, today, I'm State Representative Mark Batnick. Today, we have Pam Rodriguez, who is a career planner at the Workforce Services Division of Will County. Today's topic is effective resume writing and interviewing techniques. Job seekers are going to learn the basics of creating an effective and competitive resume. The webinar will show you how to customize your resume for different positions and talk about what to put on your resume if you've been laid off during the COVID-19 pandemic. You're going to learn how to prepare for a job interview, especially using online, online platforms. Clearly, I'm having a little bit of, a little bit of trouble today. Um, also covered will be common questions and, and how to answer them. Lastly, you will be given suggestions on questions you can ask during an interview and how to follow up with, with companies. I wanna make, uh, make note of another thing. We put an online jobs bulletin. We wanted to do a, a jobs fair this year. We obviously couldn't because of COVID, but we put an online jobs bulletin on our website. That's repbatnick.com. We have 28 job listings there. There's a wide variety of job openings ranging from, from Illinois tollway to uh, school district positions. Um, and then at the end, you'll have some time for, uh, for questions and answers. So, Thank you very, very much for, for participating. You guys are, are, are part of our future. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Pam Rodriguez. Hello, welcome everyone. So today we're going to talk about effective resume writing and interview techniques. If anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat. I will go through the chat at the end of the presentation. So that way, um, it gives us a little bit of time and then sometimes the presentation will actually answer the question that you might have. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Here are some of the goals that we'll cover is how to create an effective resume, resume overview and content, the difference between an in-person and online interview, interview preparation and practice, and then learn how and when to send a follow-up. So to create an effective resume, we want not only it to be effective, but we want it to be competitive. We're going to use an, a chronological type resume. That is the most preferred resume from employers. We want to outline our qualifications, highlight our accomplishments. Accomplishments have been a trend for a while now, so just not what did we do, but how well did we do it? Did we save the company money? Did we, did we save the company time? How much time did we get promoted quickly? And then we want it in an easy to read format. So we're gonna use bullets, things like that. Customize a resume for each position, that is critical. That's the number one advice I give my job seekers is customize, customize, customize. Think about quality versus quantity. The employer needs to know why are you qualified for this position? And so we need to tell them that on the resume. And we're gonna use keywords and skills from that job description in order to customize that resume. There's lots and lots of keyword databases, but we need to look at the job description and see what they are using, meaning the employer. So we'll leave this example up while I talk about each of the sections so you get a good feel for what an effective cover letter, or sorry, an effective resume looks like. So the very top, and this is just an example. This is a guideline, resumes, there's thousands of different ways we could develop a resume. Of course, um, since I've been writing resumes for a very long time, I kind of have my own little formatting that I prefer, but like I said, there's many different ways that we can use uh, and format our resumes. And we'll talk about what to stay away from later on. So the first part, section A, is gonna be our contact information. So our name, we want it to be bold and a little bit larger. That will be the only font that's larger than the rest of the font. All the other font is gonna be the exact same size whether you use, decide to use 10, 11, or 12 um, size, make sure that it's not too large or too small. Then you're gonna have your address. 
if you prefer. Some people prefer not to have an address listed on the resume and that is perfectly fine. If you are targeting a remote position, you could put independent location versus an actual physical location. So that's kind of prompting to the employer that that's what you're looking for is a remote position. And of course your phone number and your email address. Just a couple of things I like to say about the phone number. Make sure when you're job searching that you have your voicemail set up, that the mailbox is free for people to leave messages. You have a professional message. So someone would call my phone and I would say, thanks for calling. This is Pamela Rodriguez. Please leave your name, a short message, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Stay away from going to music or anything like that. Then we have our email. Once again, make sure it's a professional email address. So no age or year of birth. I'm still seeing that. Now, not only is it doesn't look very professional, but also identity theft, but we wanna make sure that we're protecting ourselves. All right, section B here. This is a summary of skills. We call, I like to call it professional summary. Some people call it profile. Once again, that really doesn't matter. It's your own preference. But this summary is directly customized to the position that Jennifer is applying for. So here we can clearly tell Jennifer's applying for a senior technical analyst. Without a doubt, the employer knows what she's applying for. And then just give a brief description. You're gonna use um, some of the key skills that are out of that job description. For Jennifer here, because she's in technology, it's important to list the technology skills that she has. So for this particular resume, I actually put a technology snapshot in there. So like I said, resumes, they change uh, definitely with industries and everything like that. So it's okay if it's a little bit different than what I'm showing you here. Section C is our work history. I like to call it professional experience. We're going to list our skills and our accomplishments. If you notice, I have the company's name and I only have the years of employment, not the month and the day. Then I have my job title, which is bold, so that stands out. And then the city and state. And if you look on the left side, it's all left justified. And if you look, it's scannable. Someone that's looking at your resume can easily scan this resume. With my bullets, I'm using, I'm starting off with verbs. So that's kind of the key to try to start off with verbs. Try to stay away from responsible for. A lot of, I notice a lot of people like to use responsible for managing the purchase and blah, blah, blah. When you can just start with the verb. So you want it to be short, sweet, to the point. When you, if you're creating your um, resume from scratch, it's okay to have all those extra words. You just need to go back and edit it. Here at the Workforce Center, we do have many certified professional resume writers, and we are more than happy to review your resumes. If you need us to review it, um, we are offering virtual services so you can email it to our career services email address and somebody will take a look at that so for jennifer here getting back to the resume for jennifer i actually took out a couple of her accomplishments these are two main accomplishments that i really wanted the, the employer to recognize to read to see so i even changed the bullets if you look at her resume that stands out now, I do have the word accomplishments in italics, which I very rarely use italics, but if that word got deleted, it's not going to change the resume. So one of the things that we need to make sure that we're aware of with when we're creating our resume is the applicant tracking systems. So large companies use applicant tracking systems to scan our resumes. So you notice I won't have anything important in italics. Not all applicant tracking systems will delete italics, but I have seen it delete the word. So if you have your job title in italics and that gets deleted, that's gonna be 
really critical. That's devastating. The other thing a little bit about the ATS is we're not going to use tables. We want to stay away from text boxes. So stay away from any of those things. And like I said, there's many different kinds of applicant tracking systems. So I can't put them all in one box. I just try to stay away from as much as I can. Plain is better. And then just try to use the bold and unbold when you um, should try to make things stand out. Some other options. You can also have, oops, I skipped the education. You definitely want to have your education on there. Even if it's just high school diploma or high school equivalency, GED, have education on there. If you have associate's degree, bachelor's degree, master's degree, definitely list your last education. I do tell anyone that does have a master's degree, definitely list your bachelor's degree too. A lot of times those are in different areas and so we want to make sure that we're highlighting that. Some other categories that we could add are awards, licenses, associations, interests, if it's related to the career that we're going for. Um, military, definitely enlist your military. There's a big push to hire veterans. There always has been. Volunteerism, we want to put that down. And then related activities. It's going to be important for us, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic right now, that if you are unemployed, that you talk about what have you done during this time. So listing that volunteerism, you know, whether you are just volunteering, you know, once a week or what, whatever it is, we, it's important for you to list that down. The other thing is because the big push is remote positions. If, let's just say Jennifer's last position technical manager, it was remote. I would put in parentheses remote because if she's applying for other remote positions, that's going to be important for the employer to know that she has that experience. So let's talk about accomplishment statements. These are really impactful and you'll see. So with an example, I'm going to talk about that example next, but focus on accomplishment statements. Meeting exceeding specific goals accurately or timely. If you finish a major project on time or under budget, mention that. If you've implemented processes that increase productivity or save the company time. The next one is saving the company time or money. Quotes or data from performance reviews, because I understand not everybody, like my job, it's hard to get those numbers. And so we can add in quotes or performance reviews. If you have evidence of a higher product productivity than peers, you could list that down as an accomplishment. Frequency timing of promotions, like I had mentioned earlier. If you maybe got promoted to management position within three months, that's a great accomplishment. You want to talk about that. That's a testing and that's giving evidence to your work skills. And any of the other awards that you might have gotten, if you've received an award for employee of the month, excellent attendance, salesperson of the month or quarter, things like that. And we want to try to put numbers wherever we can, like in this example here. Responded to over 85 customer calls daily and solved 90% of their concerns. Or submitted over 500 construction bids annually and was awarded 90% of the contracts. So those are much more impactful. So going back to the first one here about responding to over 85 customer calls daily and solved 90% of their concerns. That's much more impactful than saying, I answer customer calls. So that way the employer gets a good idea what your office looked like, what the call volume was, and what did you do with these calls. So with the com combined, um, combining of the workshops here, with the, let me just touch on before the resume writing. So with the resume, I tell everyone, if you're submitting resumes and you're getting the interview, you know your resume is working for you. 
okay? If you are submitting resumes and you are not getting those interviews, revisit your resume. Have professionals like us here at the Workforce Center take a look at it for you. We can help you, guide you, um, teach you how to customize it. That's part of our jobs, that's our specialty. Everything we do here, we want people to find employment. So with that being said, once you get that interview, there's gonna be a few things that are a little bit different right now with the COVID-19 and being social distancing and everything like that. So we have our in-person inter interview and our online interview. So I called it the traditional versus the new interview. And with the traditional interview, know how to get to the interview location, of course. <laughs> you would get the Google Maps, you would map it out before you have to physically go to the location, make sure you have any questions, you ask that prior to the interview. You want to arrive early to the interview location. So my rule of thumb is 10 to 15 minutes early. Dress appropriately and bring along relevant or requested documents. At the bare minimum, what you're gonna bring is a paper resume and a notebook and pen. So now the new styles of interview, we're still gonna do some of the same things that we did traditionally, except for we need to make sure that we're finding a quiet place for the interview, somewhere that's suitable, well lit, avoid a noisy, a noisy spot, and watch out for a messy background. So you do want to make sure that you're practicing um, any online formats, whether it's Zoom, Microsoft Teams. A lot of companies right now seem to have their own formatting, um, but you can always do a Zoom meeting with friends or even here at the Workforce Center. We could do a practice Zoom online interview, and that will just help you to look, if you notice I'm looking at the screen and looking at the camera, the camera when I'm looking right now at the camera, that's looking like I have eye contact, but then I revert back to the screen. So that takes a little bit of practice. And of course, we always wanna look at the camera as much as possible, but us being people, used to being meeting people in person, we wanna look at the person right in the eyes and that's gonna be at the screen, not the camera. So there's a few things that you definitely want to make sure that you practice. Test your internet connection, the audio and video. Make sure you're downloading any necessary applications. I know when I was working remotely, one of the things I would do is if I had a Zoom meeting, I would tell my son in the house, okay, no internet, get off the Xbox, whatever, to, so that way I made sure that my internet was working to capacity. This is your interview. You need to make sure that you're giving it your all. You're gonna dress just like you would in a face-to-face -face interview. I know, we probably have all seen those funny videos on um, TV. I've even seen some on the news about someone dressing, you know, they had a nice shirt on and then pajama bottoms and they're on a, on a work call and then they have to get up to go get the door or something and everybody got to see the pajama bottoms. So, Avoid that and just dress like you would for the interview. One advantage, and I think this is an advantage with the online interviews, is we can have our documents ready for us. And what we can do is we can do a little bit different versus when we're bringing these documents in person. I talk about putting um, post-it notes along our screen so that way we're not looking too far away or too far down. You can give yourself reminders um, for example, the tell me about yourself question, you can give yourself some points to talk about. So that's just really good advice to have Go, moving forward. We're not sure if we're going to have in-person interviews or the online interviews, but definitely start getting used to that virtual because I have a feeling that this, even if, even if COVID, we get a vaccine or whatever, you know, the numbers go down way enough that um, we could do in-person interviews. I have a feeling that employers, they're gonna start to do more virtual everything. So technology right now, it's time, for, time to learn and we are here to help you with that. We can practice with that. 
All right, so some overall interview preparation and practice, whether it's online or traditional. We want to research the company and the position. Get details on who's going to conduct the interview uh, and the format. I like to scope out the person. If you have the person's name, take a look at their LinkedIn. Take a look at their background. See if you have something in common with the person. Because an interview is just mostly basically saying, are you going to be a good fit with the company? So if you can find some commonality there, that's going to help you with the interview. And it's also showing the interviewer that you like to do your research. You want to anticipate questions, prepare and rehearse responses, which I'll go over a few questions and how you could answer them. Definitely develop a list of questions to ask about the job, the company. Try not to ask anything that is that you should already know, information that you should already know. If you're going physically to an interview, get a checklist of materials to take. If it's an online interview, make a checklist for items that you would like to have by your desk. Provide details to your references. So before you even have your interview, make sure you call your references and let them know, you know, how, you know, hey, whatever my friend is, hey, Jamie, I'm gonna have an interview for XYZ position, and I just wanna let you know in case if they call you for a reference check. And I'm already gonna email her my resume because even though she's my reference, she doesn't know everything that I do right now. And I can't even talk about the position that I'm applying for, what I would like her to even, I could suggest some items that she could touch on as far as the reference calls. You wanna brush up on the elements of the professional interview style. So the appearance, body language, tone of voice, all of those make sure you're aware of. Once again, we provide mock interviews at the Workforce Center. We're close to the public right now, but we offer that virtually. We can use Zoom, we can use FaceTime. So there's lots of other applications that we could use, but just to let you know that that is available. And I have actually done a couple of mock interviews online. One of my customers early, earlier on, I think it was in April, she had questions about that. And I said, hey, let's do a mock interview. And so that she actually gave me feedback and said that helped her for her online interview when she moved forward. And it's simple things like the eye contact, like I was talking about looking at the camera, um, the background, maybe the way the camera's positioned, the lighting. So all of that can help you. So let's talk a little bit about these interview questions. One thing that I do want to point out that it's a new resource on LinkedIn. Under LinkedIn, under the job section, they actually have a whole section about interview questions, which I think is amazing. It's new, so I'm trying to get the word out there to everyone, but it's under jobs and then it's under more and then there's um, interview questions. So a lot of these common interview questions and they help you answer them. So I think it's a great resource. So here's a couple of common interview questions. The first one here, tell me about yourself. Make sure you're short to the point. Only talk about your professional self. So I like to ask this question when I'm talking with a job seeker. I like to ask that right off the bat to see what they say. And then I kind of guide them on that answer. You always want to talk about the professional self according to the position you're applying for. Okay, so if I were asked that, tell me about yourself, I'm not going to go back to, well, I went back to school as an adult, blah, blah, blah. I worked in manufacturing, I know how to drive a forklift. Because this position has nothing to do with driving a forklift. They don't care. Um, not to sound mean, but we want to get straight to the point. And we want to talk about skills that are related to the position we're applying for. All right, the second one here, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Strengths, you're gonna pick a relevant skill and how you successfully applied that skill. And weaknesses, pick a weakness that you've been working on. Simple as that. And you, 
one thing with interviewing is you have to be comfortable with that silence. So I know that's one of the interview techniques when I'm asking interview questions. I'll purposely stop and pause to see if the job seeker is comfortable with that silent. It's okay, we do not have to cover up that space. The interviewer may be writing down answers or jotting down notes, and that's okay. We want them to take notes of us and our answers. So going back to the weakness, a lot of people are okay with the strengths. It's the weakness I always get questions about. I don't know what to put, I don't know what to say. So there's a lot of different ways you could say it. I've heard, and please don't use this one because I've overheard it, talking about, oh, I'm really detailed, but then I take a look at the bigger picture and blah, blah, blah. I've heard that answer over and over and over again. The simple thing to do is think about what your weakness is. Do a self-evaluation of yourself. One of mine that I would talk about is Microsoft Excel. That's a weakness. I don't work a lot with it. It's not something that I do every day. However, I continually to improve it. I take classes. We can even talk about the free online classes through allison.com. But talk about how you're improving it. That's what the employer is looking for. The employer is looking for, yes, you've identified a weakness, but what are you doing about it? And also think about the positives. Switch these questions around to be positive. I recently was talking to a job seeker and he was telling about how negative the questions were. And so if the questions seem to be real negative, make sure you're turning and spinning all the answers to positives. Because that's going to be, that's going to leave a good impression on the interviewer. The third one here, tell me about an accomplishment you're proud of. You're actually going to want to think about three or four projects or accomplishments that you've had. Because this question, and that's why I have it listed on here, this question could be asked in multiple different ways. And so it's important that you have different accomplishments that you can talk about. And they could be little accomplishments. They could be accomplishments with a job. It could be promotions. Um, it could be a volunteer activity. Maybe you coordinated the Relay for Life team and you were able to raise $5,000 for your team. That's a good accomplishment. You know, it doesn't have to be directly work related, but those are still work related skills that you're using. All right, number four, give an example of your work habits. So you want to give a concrete example of your work habit and use your past positions. I like to make lists and prioritize the list. I use an online calendar to stay organized. So I actually ask a similar question of this in my mock online interviews. And the question comes across, how do you stay organized? It's about the same. So to give you a little example, one of my job seekers, when I had asked this, now I knew she was organized. She dealt with multi, multiple accounts, international accounts. And so I knew she was organized. So I was actually surprised that she had difficulty answering this. And this is why you want to practice the interview questions. So that was the first time I had ever discussed one interview question for so long. And she was prepping for an interview. So thankfully, she gave me feedback. After her interview, she thanked me over and over because we did go over that question and she didn't know how to answer. And then later on, she was able to answer that. And like I said, that's an advantage of getting that mock interview. Use resources like Glassdoor, um, LinkedIn, the good old Google to help you out. Um, but you wanna think about these common interview questions and prepare for them. And like the four that I have listed here, they could be asked in different ways. So it's a good idea to get yourself comfortable. And another thing is we have to get comfortable with talking about ourselves. I, I joke sometimes with the job seekers. And I said, yeah, when we're little, we're told don't brag, don't brag, don't brag. And then now here we are adults and we have to brag. We need to brag about our skills. So think about that, you know, it's okay to brag. 
you're in an interview, you wanna get that job. So brag about your skills and brag about all those accomplishments that you have. All right, I love this slide because I remember when I used to interview, I would always get stumped on this. Do you have any questions? That's what the interviewer would say. And then this is my look. Oh, <laughs> and it's because all my questions I had developed, they had already answered them. So that's why I like this list of questions because these are questions that aren't always answered by the interviewer or, or they talk about the position. So the first one here, what do you see for the long-term growth of the company? And right now, that's a great question to ask, especially with the pandemic and everything going on, and if you were laid off. So while I was helping job seekers in 2008 during that recession, this was a great question to ask during that time too, because there was a lot of uncertainty. I had a lot, lot of job seekers that, had, that were at companies for 20 plus years, and this was a big concern of theirs. So that's a great question that, for you to ask. What kinds of opportunities are there for training and career advancement? So this would be a good question if it's an entry level position. Obviously, if you're already in management, that's gonna be a little bit different. That's gonna look differently. So that question, make sure you pick and choose when you wanna ask that. The next one, I really like this question here. Can you tell me about the successes and challenges faced by the team and other workers that I would interact with. Because once the interviewer answer those, that question, you can come back and say, oh yeah, yeah, I had a situation similar to that in my prior employment. So then it can be a conversation starter. And then you're also highlighting your skills that you're able to overcome those challenges that could potentially be in the future. The next one here, what are the two or three most important qualities required for success in this job and at this company? Once again, it's one of the, it's one of the questions that I really like because it's, a, it's another conversation starter. If they talk about it, you know, you ask that question, they give you two of the three most important qualities, you can come back and reiterate that you have those qualities. Because sometimes during the interview, our answers get lost and it's no fault of our own. It's just they get lost in the conversation. So this is a great way to wrap up an interview. And of course, and I didn't list this question here, um, always ask what the next steps for the hiring process is. And I didn't put that, I didn't list that down because most employers lately, they just go through the steps and say, okay, the next step would be this and this. But if they don't give you a timeline, be sure to ask that timeline. The other thing that you wanna make sure you stay away from is stay away from asking about money. The trend is lately, which I thought was very odd, but I was observing at a job fair, the first thing the recruiter asked was, how much are you looking to get paid? And me observing, I was actually kind of shocked. But that's kind of something that job seekers, we need to figure that out before we're even putting in our resume and before we even have the interview. What is the salary that we're looking to make? So if we get asked that, we can tell them. And it's a good idea to give them range. So there's lots of resources to figure out salaries, like salary.com payscale.com, those two are just ones that I always remember. But I do highlight those in my job search workshop that I put on for the workforce. Those are each an hour long, so it's a little bit longer, but we wanna think about that salary prior, like I said. So that way it opens up to negotiation and give them a range. Don't just say $1 amount because what if they were willing to pay you more? So give a range. Following up for your interview, that's a very important thing to do. This activity I, is a step that a lot of people miss. You always wanna make sure that you're following up. So there's a couple of different follow-ups as far as the interview goes. The first follow-up is gonna be directly right after your interview. 
hopefully during that interview or some sort of time, you get their contact information, preferably their email, and you can email them a follow-up. I call it a follow-up letter, a follow-up email. It doesn't have to be real formal, but what you wanna do is you wanna touch on things that you specifically talked about in the interview. And also, if there's anything that you forgot to tell them, definitely put that in there as well. An email is the most appropriate um, when previous communication was email as well. Like I said, with the COVID going on, we're not gonna drop off a note card. You can mail one if you want, but like I said, the email is the preferred method right now. Another thing about the interview, reflect on those questions and how you answer them. Make sure you're thanking them in the email for the time that they've taken. You don't wanna sit back and wait, be proactive. So you're gonna do the quick follow-up after the interview. And then let's say they're gonna make a decision in a week. Well, then in a week, if you haven't heard from them on the eighth day or the ninth day, you know, a little bit after, you want to follow up and ask them, you know, is the position still open? Are you looking for candidates? Um, you can ask them those questions. And I know it's frustrating because sometimes employers don't get back to us, but it's the effort that we're putting in, which is important. You want to try to stay connected. And interviewing, doing all these follow-ups will help you stay connected. Because what if they hired someone that they thought was a better fit, but then that week they get a new position open? You just never know. So you want to network with these people, um, network with the interviewers, especially if you really like the company. And tell them that. If you like the company, tell them that in your follow-ups. You know, I really enjoy learning a lot about your company. I think it's going to be a great place to work. Please let me know if you have any future opportunities available. That's leaving the door open for them too. And employers, they much rather go back to their other original candidates than repost and have to go through 200 resumes. Okay, so make sure that you're using those follow up procedures. I know we were supposed to be going an hour. We're a little bit short because obviously I do this a lot, so I talk a lot about each one. But I do wanna give out my, um, it'll give us a little bit more time with our questions and answers. But I do wanna um, let everyone know if you wanna schedule a resume review or a mock online interview with a career planner, with like myself, um, you can call our direct number here, the 815-727-4444, press zero to talk to the operator. Or you can email us at careerservices at jobsforpeople.org. So either of those options, like I said, at the Workforce Center, we are here to help you in any way possible to find employment. I am gonna take a look at some of these questions that we have, let's see. All right, sorry, I'm just filtering through the questions here. I'm going to jump in here a little bit, Pam. Go that's right okay. ahead. I'm going to read okay. these questions. <laughs> yeah, as you're as you're looking through the questions, I want to remind everybody again about um, repbatnick.com and our job uh, posting that we have. Um, I know the the phone number for you is is up there, which is which is awesome. You're going to be have a lot more um, information specific to this. But if anybody needs anything else, um, our office phone number is eight one five two five four zero 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 eight one five two five four zero 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 and you know you touched on something towards the end there I, that i can't um emphasize enough is that if if you really like a company let people know that i mean i've hired people uh in the past as well and 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 when when you feel like they have the attitude that they want to work there are people who want to work at a place stay longer they're better employees so if you give the impression that you are somebody who is, you know, really loves the company, loves what they do, you know, whatever it is, and is, an, is excited about it. Um, that excitement rubs off. And I think is, is just a, a great tip you squeezed in there. So um, 815-254-0000. Once again, it's our phone number, repbatnick.com. We got all those jobs posted. And I'll, I'll turn it back over to you with some of the questions. 
Okay. So I'm just filtering through these um, questions. I'm not, I'm kind of confused because they're all by the same person and I'm looking for resume interview questions. Okay. All right. Well, I don't see any other any questions. Um, anyone else have any questions? Please feel free to type in a question. Um, like I said, I'm available through this the phone number that's listed up above. Awesome. You want me to go ahead and close in, Pam? Yeah. Yep. Did you guys have any represented? Did you have any questions for me or anything like that? <laughs> I uh, I no I think I think you did an excellent job and I, I the 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 best part is is that you have a way here for uh, people to get back to you if they do have uh, specific questions. Um, I, have have you gotten much feedback about um, uh, what type of jobs are out there? That's the one question I would I would say. Um, I have had you know like I said we have a lot of people on our website already, but um, what are you hearing about? people, what types of jobs are people landing right now or what industries are doing doing well through this uh, difficult time? Well, not only during this difficult time, but as most people have seen on the news, Amazon moved in again to Shanahan. But so warehouse, I mean, we're just the warehouse industry. They're hiring like crazy and it's the start of their um, seasonal period. So we're see seeing even a more influx of um, warehouse positions. Another trend that is kind of unique that I haven't seen in quite a few years is in the education. I know like Manhattan School District, they have 13 positions open and that seems to be pretty common. A lot of the schools, um, and I haven't looked at all the positions, but not only um, teachers, but they're looking for aides and stuff too. And I'm sure it's all to address all the remote learning and everything like that. So that was a trend that I was actually surprised to see. Um, and I think that's a good thing because um, it gets you in a different type of field besides the warehouse and logistics. Yeah, the other thing that I would say that I'm I'm seeing and talking to uh, talking to employers and 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 being in and around in the district, there certainly does seem to be a uh, a big opportunity for pretty well paying uh, CTE and particularly construction jobs. Um, I uh, I was actually coming. I, I spoke with my plumber, um, and uh, uh, he said that uh, he's in his 30s and he was the they have to do continuing education and that he was. Uh, uh, he was by far the youngest person in there, and that a lot of people are aging out, and, and not a young, lot, not a lot, lot of young people are going into it. And I remember being at a, at an event because um, I still don't have my my bathroom remodeled, and and uh, I was trying to find a plumber to do some other work. And a guy says to me, he says, he says, "Oh, I got a great guy, and he only charges a hundred dollars an hour. Um, a great plumber only charges a hundred dollars an hour." And I said, "Well, that, that's 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 great." So. Um, um, hopefully we can we we can open our minds more to uh, all different kinds of uh, possibilities out there. Uh, yeah, that is a good point about the about the union and trades. We were we're working with a construction works grant with the Illinois Tollway to help um, filter people into the unions and things like that. And so I've talked to a lot of the different union representatives, and that is one of the biggest concerns is because there are a lot of people that are aging out right now, and not enough people. Um, job seekers to fill in those positions and you know it just it does take a special person you have to be a little bit mechanically inclined and things like that but yeah that is um, that is another trend that I am seeing as well yeah I'll leave it with this I toured the Boeing plant down in uh, southeastern uh, part of the state and they said that their average riveter um, is 57 years old um, and they're concerned about uh, replacing them, and they have their their benefits package is in the is in the six figure range uh, mm -hmm. for those people. So you know, good retirement, good 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 salary. Um, so there, there's definitely uh, definitely at least some opportunities uh, opportunities out there. So with that, it looks like we're having a little bit of trouble with the chat box. So everybody has your your phone number and, and your email address. Yes. I can't thank you enough for coming on here. I can't thank all the people that are watching this enough for 
um, for going through it and, and being part of the solution. We need people in the community that are part of the solution. Once again, I'll give you my phone number, 815-254-0000. And repbatnick.com has all those jobs post, job postings. Uh, do you have anything else you wanted to add? No, just thank yeah. you for having me and let, allowing me to present for you. Appreciate it. We, uh, we look forward to hearing from everybody. Thank you. Okay, thank you.